So this here is my laptop and there's a couple of problems with it, but the big one we're going to be fixing today is right around here, which is there's a few bad keys here. The big one is this alt key here and the shift key aren't working. And for those who are curious, the other side doesn't work either, so I can't just use the other side ones. And that's kind of annoying because I can't alt tab between programs, I have to use Windows tab on Windows 7, which sucks. And then I have to um, do some other just annoying things to use it, which I kind of hate, but it works. So like if I type some text here, you can notice that, like for example, I'm typing Z's, now I'm holding shift, nothing happens. So if I want to type a caps lock, to push down ca control lock, um, caps lock to do it. So luckily though, this laptop's actually pretty easy to change its keyboard in. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. The other problems with it that I'm not going to be worried about now is the battery's basically completely shot. It can't hold a charge for any considerable amount of time, but I don't really care about that. So I went on eBay and I got this guy. Basically an identical keyboard from similar laptops. They used, Dell used this keyboard in a few systems. They used it in the M6600 to the M6800. They used it in the 15 inch versions as well. So that's the 4600 to the 4800. They used it in their like 15 inch business grade laptops as well. And a few other things. So basically first thing is shutting it down before you do anything. And then um, basic repairs are this piece here pries off. You basically, I don't want to save it for shutdown. Um, basically, this piece here kind of pries up and around. Yeah, there's a crack smudger to be used, but I don't have it on me. Um, as in, once this piece pries up here, um, there's about seven Phillips screws, I think, that hold the whole keyboard in, as in a few clips. And you have to remember to actually put this back in, because you can forget these clips pretty easily. Um, the other thing is, this little touch stick is part of the keyboard, these aren't, they're part of the trackpad assembly, I think. Uh, yeah, and here's the screws here, so... These screws are located, um... Right down the bottom here. Around this bottom edge. So I don't have the perfect screwdriver, my good kit's used somewhere else now, so I'm gonna just be using a bigger one and pulling off all these screws, putting them somewhere safe. So all the screws are off the old keyboard now. Kind of pops up, there's a few clips, and then there's one big cable here, which you have to kind of pry up here somehow, and then it pops right out. And here you go, the old one looks pretty much exactly like the new one, except it's dusty. Now this new one should just fit in and work just like the old guy did. I've tried reseating all these cables and stuff before to see if it's like, oh, maybe it got unplugged somewhere for the shift keys, but nope, couldn't find anything, so it's time for a new one. I don't think I spilled anything on it, because I know that's the obvious one, and it's weird how some keys failed, it wasn't in an area, so it's not like the whole left side failed, as in ones on the other side failed as well. I just want to test it, I'm turning it on. Yeah, you should wait, but I'm testing it. The cable didn't want to work for the first time, but now it seems to be working perfectly. So I can type with capitals and non-capitals, back like screen dimming works fine. You can see backlight dimming works perfectly. Um, not much else to say now. It works. Um, it doesn't feel like it's sitting in right. It feels like it's kind of sitting up and it could be because it's bent or it could just be that's how they designed it. I don't know. I'm pretty darn sure this is a used keyboard, not a new one. Um, because you really can't find these in stock new and I don't want to pay. I don't know what Dell's probably charging for these new 60 bucks or something stupid. So only one more thing to do which is put this hunk of plastic back on the outer shell here. And then it's working perfectly. I can alt tab again, which is nice, because I had to use this Windows tab thing, which is stupid. I don't know why they include that. They took it out in Windows 8 and replaced it with something that's, in my opinion, almost worse, which was switching between the modern UI apps, which... Man, I don't remember anyone ever using that. Now Windows 10 has a usable kind of desktop switcher thing. Oh, the getting this on can kind of be a pain. Um, but, eh, that's beside the point. Keyboard works. Feels a bit different. 
I guess it's kind of sitting up more. I think it was bent a little bit and maybe shipping. I don't remember. But, oh, this thing's a pain to pry on. I don't know if I just did it worse this time than normal, but it's on now. Now the only thing in place now is the battery in here, but oh my gosh, being able to use alt keys and stuff. Hello, this is a test of the shift key. Yay. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more quick pipe replacement videos like this in the future.